<laughs> Hello. My name is Paul Downs. I'm a barrister at Quadrant Chambers. I've been practicing in banking and accountancy type disputes for over 20 years. This Qubit talk, over 20 years, I hear you say, yes. This Qubit talk is called, What is the Rule in Clayton's Case? Now, the rule in Clayton's case is all about appropriation. Where you have a lender and a borrower, let's assume the borrower has two debts with the lender, one for, say, £1,000 and another one for £2,000. And the borrower sends the lender a payment of £500. The question arises, which debt does the £500 reduce? And it might be quite important. Say one debt has an interest rate of 5% and the other debt has an interest rate at 10%. Obviously, the borrower wants to pay off the debt with a higher interest rate, or the lender might want the sum to pay off the loan with a lower interest rate. Say, for example, you have a situation where a lender makes a loan of £100,000, a mortgage, at, let's say, 12% per annum interest rate, and every single month the borrower sends off £1,000 to the lender. If that £1,000 is appropriated to the capital amount, the mortgage will be paid off in 25 years. But if the £1,000 a month is appropriated to the interest, the mortgage will never be repaid. The general rule of appropriation is that the first right of appropriation is to the borrower. They can say this £500 is to go to this loan or that loan. If the borrower says nothing, then the lender has the right to decide which debt to appropriate the payment to. And after that, there are certain common law rules, and that's where Clayton's case comes in. And there is a case, Parr's Banking Company and Yates, which suggests that payments between capital interest should always go to interest, but the law on that is not straightforward. Now, another issue, or the main issue with Clayton's case, is time. So imagine we have a running account, like a current account, a bank account. Payments coming in, payments going out, sometimes lots of payments every single day. The money coming in, if it's your bank account, credits the bank account. It increases the credit balance or reduces the overdraft. The money going out is effectively a reduction in the credit balance. Or if you're in overdraft, it will increase the amount of the debt. But what happens where something changes, some issue, some event happens which changes the status of the sums in that account? Say, for example, the account is overdrawn. And there comes a point in time when the bank's security is no more. It might be very important to work out whether the debt, the end debt on the account, is attributable to the withdrawings before the security was invalid, because that would be enforceable, or afterwards, in which case it wouldn't. And there's a very famous case called Dealey and Lloyds, which deals with that. And Dealey and Lloyds applied the rule in Clayton's case. Now, Clayton's case is a very old case, and it's not actually called Clayton's case. It's Devane's and Noble, a case in 1816. And the story behind this case is that Mr. Clayton had a bank account with a bank called Devane's, Doors, Noble and Company. It wasn't a big corporate bank like we have today. It was a small partnership. In fact, in the 19th century, many banks were just small businesses operated in this way. So this banking partnership was... Going along quite happily, Mr. Clayton had a credit balance at the account of £1,717. And then Mr. Devane's, one of the partners, died in 1809. Now, Mr. Clayton kept, kept operating the account. He paid into it and he drew out. It just kept turning over. And the following year, in 1810, the partnership became insolvent and went into bankruptcy. And it owed Mr. Clayton money. His account was in credit. And the question arose, was that credit attributable to the account before Mr. Devane's had died, in which case Mr. Devane's estate would be liable for the credit balance, or was the credit balance attributable to the later transactions, in which case the estate would not be liable? The rule is very simple. First in, first out. So what we need to do is understand the first in, first out rule. So I've got some money here, and imagine this table is a bank account. So on day one, I pay in £50. On day two, I pay in £5. The next day, £10. Then 50 then 5 then 20 then 10 
and then 50. My closing balance at the end of that is 200 pounds. I go to the bank and I want to withdraw 50 pounds. The question is, when I take that 50 pounds out, is it this 50 pounds, this 50 pounds, or this 50 pounds? And the rule is, first in, first out. It's the first 50 pounds that comes out first. That's the rule in Clayton's case, very simply put. So in Devane's and Noble, the credit balance, because there had been sufficient turnover of the account, the credit balance when Mr. Devane's had died had in fact all been paid out. And what the account consisted of when in 1810, when the partnership was insolvent, were the later credits. So Mr. Devane's estate was not liable for those. Let's have a look at what that means in a, an imaginary account. So here we have an account, we have the opening balance of minus £4,000, so the account's overdrawn. And then if we look at the left-hand column, we've got payments in and payments out down to the 28th of February, where the balance is minus £17,000. Now let's say, for some reason, we have to know which debit entries to that account make up the minus 17,000. Well, you don't start from the top, even though the rule is first in, first out. Um, that's quite a confusing way to do it. The easiest way to do it is this. Look at the minus 17,000 and then count back the debit entries until you get to 17,000. So if we look at the debit column, the last payment out was 10,000 pounds. So obviously that's part of the 17,000. And the next payment out going up was 16,000 pounds. Well, that takes us to 26,000. That's greater than the 17. So the answer to the question is the minus 17,000 consists of the 10,000 plus 7,000 of the payment out on the 10th of February. If we're dealing with a credit situation, here we have the same sort of account, but this time ending up with a credit balance, you do exactly the same thing. You look at the last balance, that is the 28th of February, and it's £4,000. What's that made up of? Well, we'll look at the payments in column this time and work backwards. The first payment in going backwards is on the 5th of February. That's £15,000. That's more than the £4,000. So the answer to the question is that £4,000 credit balance is £4,000 out of the £15,000. So it's really easy. There's only three cases you need to know. Clayton's case, Dealey and Lloyd's, and if you want to be a real expert, know about Parr's Banking Company. Clayton's case, the rule is first in, first out. And in a running account, find the closing balance and track back the last entries that make up that balance. Thank you for watching.